Hello and welcome to tonight's book reading session of Preparing for the Day After. Preparing for the Day After is a photojournalistic treatise on disaster mitigation published by me, Malini Shankar and Walter Keller for the 10th anniversary of the Asian Tsunami. Tonight, we will study the need for sustainable mass transport systems in the post-COVID-19 era and how we can contextualize it for, the, for Indian needs. However, I must clarify that there was no COVID related uh, topics or content in the book because it was published in December 2014. I must also bring to your notice that uh, I have received feedback asking for a more elaborate presentation about post-COVID era architecture. Let us first recap what we have learned in the previous book reading session before starting tonight's session. Water and sanitation is central to developmental discourse. Culture-sensitive food for calamity-struck survivors is critical to ensure no starvation deaths in a calamity-struck landscape. Livelihood security based on traditional vocations in detriment to agro-meteorological conditions has to be part of the development paradigm, to be sure. Ch climate change adaptation, menstrual hygiene, solid waste management, universal health care access and sustainable development goals, they are all factors to be included in the developmental agenda. Media personnel must be trained in scrutinizing common property resources to publicize disaster preparedness or the lack of it. Today we take a detailed look at sustainable mass transport systems to be re redesigned for a post-COVID-19 era where social distancing will be the norm. Renewable energy and inclusive transport infrastructure will be the core of the sustainable development goals focus for India. In a post-COVID-19 era though, the per capita transport infrastructure should be only 30% of the capacity at current levels to make it COVID compatible, which means smaller vehicles like cars are more practical for long distance. For inner city travel, bicycles are winsome in so many ways, healthier, less expensive, climate friendly, so going to work has to be on bicycle hereafter, unless one is not physically fit to ride a bike or a bicycle. Carpooling is an option for differently abled people to go to work. Or work from home is another sustainable option for differently abled persons for their livelihood security. How about CSR initiatives from Indian automobile manufacturers where special automation is made for differently abled persons, including mobility impaired people, visually challenged and hearing impaired people. Mahindra and Mahindra, Hindustan Motors, the Tatas, I hope they're listening. India has not achieved the target of population to public transport ratio, which was the ideal being striven for before liberalization. We were bemoaning the fact that there were no uh, multiple modes of public transport for our bulging populace. Multiple modes of public transport infrastructure would have lessened automobile consumption and decreased vehicular pollution or emissions from automobiles. But now with COVID, a 45-seater bus must necessarily accommodate only 15 people. Given the pandemic realities, transporting 50 to 100 people in a train car or a city bus is completely obsolete. Speaking to Digital Discourse Foundation, retired professor from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, Dr. Subaraya Prasan, mass, tra mass transport expert says, quote, cannot repeat the present pattern. Social distancing, sanitation and a near sterile environment inside the transport vehicle and the entry and exit terminals will be necessary. Only 30% of pa present passenger capacity can be allowed. Routes have, will have to be redrawn to suit home to workplace destinations. We also need to act, have and enable last mile connectivity for multiple modes of transport and transport hubs. I quote from the SDGs, GA, SDGs homepage now about mass transport. SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. Quote, sustainable transport achieves better integration of the economy while respecting the environment. It involves improving social equity, health, resilience of cities, urban rural linkages and productivity of rural areas. Unquote. India was 117 out of 193 countries in the list of SDG target achievement in August 2020. But India has the potential to revolutionize renewable energy consumption by way of mass transport itself. To quote UN Secretary General, India can be the business hub to achieve sustainable development goal of ensuring affordable and clean energy for all. UN Chief Antonio Guterres said, expressing confidence that the Indian government's decision to raise its target of renewable energy capacity will attract more commitment and investment in the sector. 
Integrated and inclusive mass transport targets come under SDG 9 and 11. That means it is sought to strive for, quote, to build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Economic growth, social development and climate action are heavily dependent on investments in infrastructure, sustainable industrial development and technological progress. In the face of a rapidly changing global economic landscape and increasing inequalities, sustained growth must include industrialization that first of all makes opportunities accessible to all people and secondly is supported by innovation and resilient infrastructure." Unquote. Social distancing is an incredibly big challenge in overpopulated places like India, China and Indonesia where the population per square kilometer is in itself unsustainable. We need to change the interior design of buses, reduce the number of seats by 70% in the post-COVID era, sterilize interiors before each trip, regulate waiting time for passenger and operators in terminals to a minimum say no more than 10 minutes, provide clean sanitized toilets at the terminals, provide sanitizers and blow dryers in toilets, for some time in the future, public transport should only carry healthy individuals. Handicapped and differently abled people should work from home. For safety, provide exclusive bus lanes. For reliability, place timing recorders in each bus to make sure that they arrive and depart on time. One reform that is necessary is to include petroleum products within the gambit of GST. That way, the fuel subsidies can be quantified and the public will benefit from rationalizing fuel imports and price variations. In fact, Dr. Subaraya Prasan says it is speculative to think GST will rationalize the subsidies. Quote, to quote him, this is highly speculative an area of policy. Automobile taxes are not used to improve transport transportation facilities and traffic management. Now, money collected is diverted to other uses. If we stop that and earmark that revenue into a separate budget plan, then enormous improvements can be made to transportation systems and traffic management. He says, transport hubs should integrate multiple modes of transport like last mile connectivity. Infrastructure for last mile connectivity has to be de developed with sustainable architecture and renewable energy. Gender sensitive interventions are necessary in public transport management. This does not mean reserved seats for women only. But it is more interesting. There is a more interesting example. New York, which is one of the few cities in the US that has public transport, uh, has, has trained their bus drivers uh, in a particular gender sensitive way, so to say. Bus drivers are trained to drop women passengers to their doorstep at night or after dark if the bus route goes by the residence of the passenger, of the woman passenger that is. That is, in case the residence of a regular woman passenger is on the bus route, then the bus or, then the driver of the bus is trained to drop off the woman passenger at the doorstep after darkness falls. There was a time, say about 40 years ago, when we needed multiple modes of public transport in India. But this was never fulfilled in India. Now, in the post-COVID era, social distancing demands 20 to 30 percent occupation occupancy only. New age COVID compatible public transport must nevertheless be inclusive, catering to the needs of differently abled and senior citizens, pneumatic floors that will slide down to help ramp a wheelchair bound person, control knobs for opening the doors, bury, uh, buying the tickets and communicating with the driver must be automated and accessible to a wheelchair bound passenger or commuter. There can be any number of differently abled people, people who have lost their voice. You can't expect the public transport to install voice synthesizers, but maybe the drivers need to be trained in doing lip reading or we need to have a dedicated bus service only for differently able people. There are so many options, you know. Public transport must be fueled by solar energy or should be electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, charging stations must be manned by physically challenged persons, war widows and caregivers of people living with mental health issues. Now that is how you can make them stakeholders in the livelihood, uh, we, uh, in the, shall I say, food security and livelihood security of differently abled people or people with mental health issues. Transportation and mobility are central to sustainable development. Sustainable transportation can enhance economic growth and improve accessibility, not just to differently abled people, but to the economy as a whole. 
access to local markets can give a tremendous boost to food and livelihood security and help achieve targets in disaster risk reduction, equitable distribution of wealth and resources, desired goals of human rights and climate change adaptation. The importance of transport for climate action is further recognized under the UNFCCC. The transport sector will be playing a particularly important role in the achievement of the Paris Agreement given the fact close to a quarter of energy-related global greenhouse gas emissions come from transport and that these emissions are projected to grow subst substantially in the years to come. Johannesburg plan of implementation provided multiple anchor points for sustainable transport in the context of infrastructure, public transport, goods, delivery networks, affordability, efficiency and convenience of transportation as well as improving urban air quality and health and reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Sustainable means and modes of transport will be the key to achieving targets enlisted in the sustainable development goals. Let me picturize this for you. Sustainable local transport running on say biofuel or any other renewable fuel will generate employment, can help in easier access of local produce to serve far off markets. Local sustainable transport can integrate markets with local produce, augment climate change adaptation by lessening travel time, increasing shelf life of local produce, aiding agriculture to enhance production integrates competitive world markets, thus increasing agricultural products consumption and profits very sustainably. This will help the rural population gain higher health indices and the economy will resonate with better access to public health care. This helps the overall human development index and better agricultural market production sustenance. Rural agricultural markets will get access to remote areas for example, tasty, fleshy, gone avocados will find buyers in remote areas of Arunachal Pradesh within India itself, stabilizing the Indian economy and currency infinitely. This can potentially make the Indian rupee fully convertible in the near term itself. That will give new meaning to India's new contentious farm laws. In the post-COVID-19 era, sustainable transport must include cold storage and refrigerated supply chains. When the private sector can participate in this kind of sustainable transport with refrigerated supply chain and cold storage market infrastructure, it will revolutionize agricultural production and exemplify sustainable development goal transport, uh, transport related goals. Transport trucks must be supported by air conditioning and cold storage facilities for supply chain management in the post-COVID-19 era. Cold storage trucks for fisheries sector need special attention in itself. Similarly, cold storage trucks for medical supplies need particular attention. Cold storage transportation of medical supplies, especially vaccines, must be integrated with other means of mass transport including international cargo flights and long distance surface transport and last mile connectivity. Trucks should also be equipped to, to be mobile hospitals or at least primary healthcare centers. Transport trucks should have forensic and testing facilities and should have a service mandate of at least 100 persons per day in the lowest geographical jurisdiction, say one village. Such mobile clinics must be attached to every village administrative council across India. Sustainable transport has the potential to mainstream all sustainable development goals and targets because close to a quarter of energy-related global greenhouse gas emissions come from transport. So, sustainable development goals provide multiple anchor points for sustainable transport in the context of infrastructure, public transport systems, goods, delivery networks, affordability, efficiency and convenience of transportation as well as improving urban air quality and health and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. There are no safety instructions, not even a video on the subject for helicopter passengers flying on short routes in remote territories like islands in India. Boarding helicopters do not have infrastructure support like ramps for wheelchair bound passengers. Wheelchair passengers must struggle across the helipad as of now to board the heli with steps mind you no ramps or aero bridge for helicopter passengers dependent on wheelchair in india when i pointed it out to the airport ground staff in Khan Nicoba in india's andaman Nicoba islands i was asked to donate a wheelchair even though i was an, i was doing an unfunded research trip for my not for profit book preparing for the day after this is an area for csr activity there is a need to create transport infrastructure to tribal districts and notified tribal reserves across the subcontinent. However, danger exists of infrastructure in tribal areas being used for poaching and smuggling of forest resources. 
To mitigate this, state agencies like police and forest personnel must install cameras and cultivate an intelligence network to track movements of poachers within these areas. Sustainable means of transport should be invested upon in tribal districts and reserves so as not to encourage poaching or smuggling but to aid legitimate activities like harvesting non-timber forest produce for the livelihood of tribals and indigenous people. To develop transport or any kind of infrastructure in tribal areas calls for utilization of local resources, including raw material, human resources and local financial in instruments too. Transport infrastructure must be commensurate with the development of the tribe because if you invest in high-speed trains or airports and drone ports in tribal areas, the likelihood of it being misused is higher. Often tribal communities aspire for formal education for the younger generation. You might wonder what do schools have to do with sustainable trans transport for tribal communities. Upward mobility is a natural corollary of economic development and to mainstream the aspirations of indigenous people is apparently the duty of elected representatives and uh, the pub yeah, public representatives. Although should the tribal world be open to the floodgates of modern civilization, the responsibility falls on us to ensure that none plays Lucifer and introduces the tribal vulnerable tribal communities to alcohol and avarice. Transport infrastructure opens the floodgates of so-called civilized worlds to tribal communities. Husbanding the transition for tribal communities is not only the responsibility of state agencies and civil society organizations, but also of the media, citizens and activists. People from these walks of life must ensure that tribes in their district gain only positive exposure and the tribes should be protected from the criminal elements that may induce them into poaching, smuggling and other forest offenses or even other crimes. Inclusive and sustainable industrialization together with innovation and infrastructure can unleash dynamic and competitive economic forces that generate employment and income. They play a key role in introducing and promoting new technologies, facilitating international trade and enabling the efficient use of resources. The growth of new industries means improvement in the standard of living for many of us. If industries pursue sustainability, this approach will have a positive effect on the environment, says SDG website. In an op-ed article on SDGs 9 and 11, Dr. Shamshad Akhtar, Under Secretary General of the United Nations and Executive Secretary of the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, which is available on a link which will be embedded here in the video, says Tran sustainable transport is pivotal to Asia and the Pacific sustainability. This link will also be put up in the description box below this video. I will read from this op-ed written by Dr. Shamshad Akhtar. Under Secretary General of the United Nations and Executive Secretary of the Economic and Social Commission for, Commission for Asia Pacific. I will read this out for you now. Transport is a key contributor to economic growth, prosperity and to societal well-being. Physical links across Asia and the Pacific have increasingly improved through the years of steady investments in the Asian Highway, a project endorsed by the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, that is UNSCAP. Commission at its 48th session in 1992 to promote intergovernmental agreements to develop a regional highway network and the Trans-Asian Railways as well as the facilitation of land transport projects. These intermine projects have resulted in a network of 140,000 kilometers of roads being developed in 32 countries, which in turn has enabled better connectivity within Asia as well as between Asia and Europe and contributed to the development of other related infrastructure. Further deepening Asian transport connectivity, however, requires that we consider some additional imperatives. For instance, we must ensure that regional connectivity is seamless and promotes multimodal connectivity to allow for the most cost-effective and time-efficient delivery of goods from one point to another. In, to this end, some important regional initiative, initiatives such as the Master Plan on ASEAN Connectivity, China's One Belt, One Road Initiative and the Eurasian Economic Union provide strategic visions that will help forge broader regional and international transportation connectivity in our region. Moving forward, these initiatives must develop missing corridors and link Asia better with internal and outside markets in order to better promote seamless connectivity. Beyond this, we as a region must also develop a better understanding of how to harmonize these these plans 
with the principles of sustainable development to promote regional transport sector development that is in sync with and reinforces the 2030 agenda for sustainable development we must focus our efforts on three areas first we must urgently curb the transport sector's contribution to the asia pacific region's ghg emissions Asia's motorized transport emissions are responsible for 23% of global aggregate emissions and are set to rise to 31% by 2030. If no action is taken, transport will become the single largest emitter of GHGs or greenhouse gases, responsible for 46% of the share of global emissions by 2035. Success in meeting the global climate change targets laid out in the Paris Agreement will require both reducing transport emissions and strengthening the resilience of transport infrastructure to the effects of climate change. Second, tackling traffic congestion in our cities will help us unlock bottlenecks to economic growth by speeding up transportation and reducing costs associated with the movement of goods. To illustrate the heavy effects of such bottlenecks, traffic congestion in Bangkok, where, in, where the UN SCAP is headquartered, costs roughly 6% of Thailand's annual GDP. Third, sustainability of transport calls for a careful response to the public health dimension of transport. Reco road accidents continue to be one of the leading causes of fatalities in our economies, killing over 700,000 people annually in the Asia-Pacific and injuring many more. The economic costs of road accidents are estimated to be 3% of global GDP. Asia-Pacific's low- and middle-income countries are shouldering road accident costs as high as 5% of GDP, which is in many cases greater than the total value of their overseas development assistance. Recognizing these needs and challenges, the UN is capped with support from the government of, the Russia, government of Russian Federation, organized a ministerial conference on transport in Moscow from 5th to the 9th of December 2016 to provide an opportunity to our member states to develop a new five-year regional action program for tra sustainable transport. At its core, the regional action program promotes integrated intermodal transport systems to balance, link and coordinate the varied modes of transport such as roads, railways, maritime and aviation in order to achieve optimum economic, social and environmental performance. This program will facilitate greater intra-regional investment and trade in the region and will also guide the transport sector to significantly cut greenhouse gas emissions by optimizing resources, improving transport modal choices and increasing efficiency. Through enhancing road safety, advocacy, policy, legislation, infrastructure facilities and cross-border operations, this program will enable remote and poor rural communities better access to markets, investment, health, education and social needs. The program will also enable countries of the region to be better equipped to develop and implement evidence-based policies and plans to address urban transport, transport challenges in order to underpin future economic growth. The program will also enable countries of the region to, better, to be better equipped to develop and implement evidence-based policies and plans to address urban transport challenges in order to underpin future economic growth. Implementing this new regional action plan will be challenging but ultimately critical task if we are to realize the ambitions of the 2030 agenda. SCAP as the regional arm of the United Nations in the Asia Pacific will support the countries of the region to take the visionary steps and work together in order to ensure the contribution of the transport sector to sustainable development." Unquote. With that we come to an end for tonight's session. Next week, I will be reading an, another essay called Meals on Wheels and then I will also I will deal with post-COVID architecture when, because there has been a, a request for that. I will deal with different aspects of it like uh, cross ventilation, maybe uh, sloping roofs and how it can minimize uh, usage of AC, etc. So there will be three more, three to four more episodes on post-COVID-19 compatible or COVID-19 appropriate architect. Saturday 1st of May at 7.30 p.m. I will be live for an interaction uh, to be having a, I hope to have a good interaction with all of you. In case you have questions please feel free to write in to me on email or interact with me on the live session. It will be very interesting and we hope to contribute to the discourse. Uh, thank you so much again and um, for tuning in and please if you have not subscribed please do subscribe to the channel and please do share it in your networks thank you so much take care keep keep safe
keep smiling stay home